we're going to talk about wind power. Wind is great. It's free. The wind blows. It doesn't guarantee that it doesn't blow at night, like the sun guarantees it's dark at night. So if wind power will make a significant dent into the energy systems, it'll do so because it's economic. Let's examine the economics of wind power. The United States has seen an enormous growth of our wind capacity in the last 10 years, going from a fraction of a percent to a couple percent. It's done this and it's created therefore the infrastructure and industry to be able to produce wind turbines at very reasonable costs. Production of scale exists. So what is that cost? To create and install a one megawatt turbine, one million watts. Now remember, that's rated capacity. Okay? We'll get to that in a bit. All right? That's how much it could produce at maximum, best wind speed. It could make one megawatt. To make a one megawatt turbine, install it, have it all running, the capital cost for that is 1.2 million dollars. About a dollar twenty per watt. The large turbines you see dotting the landscape, they're actually more than a megawatt, maybe 1.6, some of them two megawatts, but we'll do it per million watts. So, where do you find 1.2 million dollars? Well, you might just have it in a drawer, but that's unlikely. More likely, you'll go to a bank and say, I'd like to borrow $1.2 million. And they'll say, sure. Yeah, I've got a good credit rating. They'll offer you an interest rate and a payback time, like buying a house. We're going to have a payback time of 30 years. We feel that in 30 years, we'll either need to replace the wind turbine, it will have broken, or something. Or maybe it'll keep running and it'll be free. But we're going to get a 30-year mortgage on $1.2 million. So at the end of that time period, if we do this at 5% interest, and we do it for 30 years, it turns out that our annual payment is $60 thousand dollars. So that's your mortgage payment each year. That's about right because if I multiplied that by 30 years it would be 1.8 million and obviously there's some interest there. So if we're just going to look at the economic cost per year, we got to pay 60,000 for the capital cost. The windmill goes someplace. So there's a farmer and the farmer needs some rent for the land. Here in the Midwest, the typical rents for the land for putting up the tower to go to the property owner is $8,000 a year. So these are our annual costs. You also need to maintain the windmill. I went to one of the companies that actually does this and I asked them on one of these large turbines, how much do you charge to maintain it? Here, the bigger the turbine it is, it's about better. Although there are fluids that go in it and they cost and there's time it takes and it's a little bigger, it takes more time. But the cost they quoted me was about $5,000 per year. So we have $5,000. I sum that up and it's going to cost me $73,000 each year to run my one megawatt rated capacity wind turbine. How much money am I going to make? Okay. I'm going to produce at most 1 million watts of electricity, but it's not always blowing at a maximum wind speed. These turbines will shut down after a certain speed. The ones that I've examined around here shut down around 50 miles per hour, a really strong wind. Beyond that, there's just too much danger. It could fall apart. At around 25 to 30 miles per hour, they actually make their rated speed. But that's not the average wind speed. There are some days when the wind's not blowing at all, and other days where it drops down in speed below that speed. Since the power of a windmill goes as the cube of the wind speed, it makes a big difference. 
Below seven miles per hour, most of these wind turbines don't turn at all. Here in the Midwest, that capacity factor is about one quarter. I actually looked at the statistics of the windmills. It's amazingly close to this. So you're really only making 250,000 watts. People buy electricity per kilowatt hour. And since we're looking at an annual cost, there are 8,760 hours in a year. If we multiply this number of watts actually produced over the year by the hours in the year, we will make around 2,200,000 kilowatt hours. And now someone has to buy it. This turns out to be a critical aspect in power. You need a power purchase agreement. Someone who says, you make the power, we will buy it, and we will buy it at this price. You need some certainty. If you don't have that certainty, you built all this structure, you're paying 73000 a year, you're making electricity at times, and no one to sell it to. A wholesale typical price for wind-generated electricity, and the number I'm going to use here might be a bit high, but 0 0.035 cents per kilowatt hour. You multiply those two numbers together and you get $77,000. $77,000 profit a year by selling the electricity, $73,000 a year by making the windmill. If everything goes right. This isn't worth it. This number is higher than this. If you already have the windmills built, don't turn them off. You're still making money. But to induce somebody to borrow all that money, to spend all that effort, all that work, they need more than a $4,000 profit a year. And this is where the government tax incentives come in. The US government, for quite a length of time, guaranteed a producer price bonus. They said, we will give you an extra 0 0.2, 0 .2, 0 .2, 2, 2, an extra 2.2 cents per kilowatt hour. If I multiply that times the amount of power I produce, this produces an extra $49,000 per year. Now, this is looking pretty profitable. For being able to make 50 some thousand dollars a year, let's build ourselves a wind farm. At the end of 2014, this producer price bonus was eliminated from the US tax system. Correspondingly, the number of new windmill starts has dropped off precipitously. And maybe that's what should happen with a mature technology. We're not gaining any more capacity of scale. We have that. We have enormous numbers of windmill farms across the United States and all of the factories to produce them. That price has already come down significantly and it's probably at about as low as it will go until there are some new technologies. It also means that even at this price difference, it's still economical to buy wind power. If it turns out that three and a half cents per kilowatt hour becomes a bit cheap because there are other sources of power and all the others are more competitive, are more expensive, maybe natural gas prices go up, nuclear prices go up, etc., wind turbines will make even more of a profit. And if the technology is good enough such that these things last longer than 30 years and the capital cost is completely paid off, then you're laughing all the way to the bank. This type of economic analysis is important with every type of energy resource. In the end, beyond government subsidies, energy systems will only be widely deployed if they make economic sense. And that's what you need to know about wind power.